Dame Nicole Brandon, and welcome to Unlimited Life. Wishing everybody out there a sacred, beautiful, special, and blessed holiday weekend. Whatever your faith, whatever your religion, whatever your belief, this is really a beautiful weekend for love, intentionality, gratitude, the oneness with all that is, sharing life with your family, with those that you love, your neighbors, your friends, and uh, with spirit in your inner self. And so today's guest encompasses all of that. When we talk about leading an unlimited life, what would that look like if we didn't have any boundaries, if we didn't have any lines, if we could live the kind of life that we always dreamed of, that we knew that we desired and that we deserved? And one of the things that's universal that we always talk about being a universal language, something that's a knowingness, the spokenness is the vibration and music, harmony, spirit, and soul. And today's guest is a master at music, harmony, vibration, life, and light. Today we are talking with Terry LeBlanc, and she is just extraordinary. She's a writer, she's a recording artist, and her music has been heard all over the world in so many different genres. From the youngest, smallest child, people just learning to speak, learning to feel, learning to move, learning who they are on this planet, to those that are looking to launch their worlds and finding the soul vibrational song and music of their heart and spirit and tonality and to launch them into their future life, from weddings to bring people together to teaching people how to find their voice. And so when we talk about the keys, the tools, the techniques, and the secrets to leading that kind of life you always knew you dreamt about, today's guest has all of that in her pocket in musicality, harmony, light, and love. So, Carrie, welcome to the show. <laughs> Wow, I, I have never been welcomed so richly and so fully. I'm just like bubbling up right now, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, it's such a joy. I mean, I am such a fan of yours, and I hope you know that. <laughs> and I do not say that lightly. It's You know, it's funny because I, I saw a show the other day, and I was telling some friends of mine, I said, this is the best show I've ever, ever seen, you know, this musical show. And a friend of mine from Utah said, wow, if Nicole Brandon says that, that must be true because you see like three shows a day. <laughs> and, you know, and I've been blessed to travel the world. And mm. your music touches me differently. Your mm. music just does something, not just to my ears, you know, it, you sing to my heart. You sing mm. to my spirit sing to the all of me and I don't even know how it's possible that you do what you do but um, you do it so well I mean it's just amazing well thank you so much you know I I am so honored to be a channel for what comes through me right because I just open up to the divine and I'm led into song you know I discovered this um, as a little girl, it was the way that I could express myself when I didn't have any other way to express myself. I just came up with songs, and it was just so natural. But I never thought that I would step into what lights me up so much. And then I can watch others be just as lit up through song, through music, through the vibration, and through the words that just come through me. I mean, it really, it really blows me away too, Nicole. <laughs> wow. Okay, so then I have a question with that. Because, you know, very often you ask people, do you sing? And they say, in the shower, in my car, you know. <laughs> and I'm always like, do you have a shower in your car? <laughs> people, that's usually what they say, in the shower, in my car. It's, I don't know why they don't say the car first, but that just seems to be how people answer the question. But So as a child, you sang what was in your heart, but how do you sing what's in other people's hearts? I mean, that's, it's like you have a crystal ball into people's souls. (laughs) So explain that. Well, you know, I just, I get really quiet and I listen and I tune in. I mean, as you mentioned uh, in that incredible introduction, um, the heart songs that I have come to call what I do 
is it's technology. Uh, it's an opening and it's a vehicle for messages to be delivered in so many different ways. So let's say, for example, it's someone who you adore most in the world, uh, like the person that you love the most in the world and you want the most precious gift you could think to them. And what better gift to give to them than their own song? So that song would be based on everything that you would share with me about that person if it was, a, you know, a surprise. And then I would feel into the energy and the vibration of what you shared with me, and I would literally let spirit just guide me to the melody and put the words together. And sometimes it does feel like it's magical, you know? It's incredible. I mean, I've been blessed because you shared a song with me. And (laughs) when you played it for me, when you sang it for me, my life tipped it o- mm. it opened in a different way. It's and it's crazy. It sounds I was giving this analogy because I was talking about you to somebody the other day, and I <laughs> said, "Did you ever try to open a pickle jar?" And I swear this is what I said. I said, "You know, like you bang it on the counter and whatever, and you slam it on the floor, and then finally you open it and you hear this popping sound." And oh my god! This this pop. I said, and then once you've opened it, then. It's open. Then the next time it glides and it opens, and once you're, it's open, it's open. And that you do something musically, kind of like that. What you do is you pop open this other space, and mm. then it, there's a free-flowing energy once it's been open and it doesn't close again. It just remains open. And that's magic. And you do that with music. That's incredible. Yeah, I love the fact that, you know, it really is that person's vibration that I feel, and that leads me on the way to creating the song, whether it's for their business and it's the energy of their business and how people are going to feel when they come to their website, you know, because everything is feeling. It's just everything starts with how we feel. I mean, that's why I'm developing this heart song coaching, because how do we feel when we speak? Are we connected to what we're saying? As soon as we can get into our hearts, you know, we're no longer in our minds and I love that and when I work with the children that's the greatest gift to watch them be out of their mind and then they'll say to me wow I just sang that so much better Carrie and I said well because you weren't thinking about it but you were feeling it you know I always say about performers you know no matter how skilled they are if they're not really feeling it I'm not really feeling it you know so I give everything I have everything I do by really connecting with the feeling first And that I empower with my children, clients, and with the adults that I work on, coaching them and with their songs as well. Wow. And then how young are the kids? I mean, because I know, first, you know, I want to talk about the kids, but I also know that kids are like a passion for you. You're like the Pied Piper. You walk into a room like all little kids run towards (laughs) you. You're like a a living walking chocolate bar. (laughs) You know, there's something about you. And people are like, yay. You know, you're like the ice cream man or something. But it's just your energy. People just come, these kids come (laughs) streaming your way. And so tell me about your, your, your work and your love for the kids because that to me is just, it's so much fun to watch you do this. Well, it goes back to a really deep place. And that is that as a child, I was always able to express myself through music, through acting, through dancing, but I wasn't able to speak up for myself. And the experience that I had from the earliest age was of not fitting in and of being what people call today bullied. And I realized that I lacked the tool to be able to express myself in a way that would have empowered me. And so I realized that, you know, children need outlets to express themselves. That's the most important thing. And I want to provide these tools to the children. And I see that the whole element of song, the whole element of what are we feeling, can we put that to music and then can we sing that? And there's just this amazing power that happens. Um, And, you know, you mentioned something about very young children. Um, Another thing that I have come up with is birth songs because I became familiar with the the beautiful tradition, you know, in Africa. I think we talked about it and how they create these songs for children before they're born, and it becomes their life song. So moved by that, that I said, you know, children need to know who they are even before they come into this world. Uh, With the challenges that they face, they need to come in empowered. So I started doing these birth songs. Then with the children that are, as they grow and as they're learning, I love to use the songs even as a way to educate and teach, you know, teaching positive principles. 
Um, and the book that I have coming out is called How One Word Will Change Your World. And it's telling children that it's all about the words we speak. You know, and we, we speak so much about that vibration behind the word, and then that affects everything. It changes our world. It's amazing. That's incredible. And, and, you know, when you talk about the world of bullying, it's so prevalent right now. I went the other night to see the musical Carrie. Mm. And, you know, and talk about bullying, you know, and it it just, it broke my heart. And I know that you were such a huge advocate and champion in the bullying world and, and for kids. And so is there any advice you would give to parents whose kids are being bullied or to kids who are being bullied? Well, yeah, I think one of the most important things is to make sure your child's talking about it um, because I've spoken with parents who have had children taken their lives and what they always say to me is they weren't able to express themselves. And that's why it touches me so deeply. And I had a best friend who took her life and I wasn't even able to be around or even know of the struggles that she had later in life to, to be there to support her. So I feel so called to support all those that I can And I'm actually creating other tools besides the ones that I have for children that can empower the family, you know, working together. But I really think to encourage your child to express all that they're feeling and to teach them how to speak up for themselves. It's so important that we speak up for ourselves and we say how we really feel and we don't hold it inside because that's what causes all the disease in the body, you know. And that's why for many years I was in a very trapped place and a very dark place because... I wasn't able to express what I was really feeling. And I'm so grateful, so, so, so grateful that I got on this spiritual, beautiful path of healing and awakening and allowed myself to acknowledge all of those feelings that I wasn't as a child and to be able to, you know, really feel them and then to be able to release them and then to say, wow, okay, now I'm coming from a truly empowered place. You know, now I want to share these tools with children and with families. You know, I was raised by my grandparents, and my grandmother, God bless her, she's 94 years old. (laughs) I say 94 years old. Wow. And I had her reading sections of this book that I wrote. And as she was reading it, it really, really just blew me away because it was empowering her. And I thought to myself, okay, I targeted this book towards children around the ages of 6 to 12. That's the sweet spot for me. But my grandmother was so empowered reading it, Nicole, that I went, wow, like anybody who picks Flash Guide is going to be empowered. Mm, That's so extraordinary. It's so beautiful. And I know that you actually, you know, you channel songs, which is, Phenomenal in itself. But one of your songs, you were nominated for the Los Angeles Music Award for a song, Anything is Possible. And and so, yeah, so when you give people that kind of power or those kind of tools to take those chances or cross those lines or live the life that they dreamt about, and you do it in a way with a vibration that allows them to step over that line. I can't imagine anything more powerful than that. Yeah, and there's and there's such a magic in what I do is um, in these workshops that I'm also doing that I was telling you about, we're going to talk about today. Um, I give the children an opportunity to answer questions, so to do a little bit of thinking about things that are present in their lives right now and maybe challenges that they're having. And then we create a conversation amongst all the children in the group, because there's that feeling of feeling alone with what you might be struggling with. But as soon as another child says, oh, I feel that too, there's this beautiful, unified feel that happens with these children. And then there's this empowerment that I just can feel it as it's happening with these children. And then we take those words and we do the magic. I start to hear a melody. My partner and I, we collaborate with the melody. And the words just start to just flow through me. As, I mean, truly, as if by magic, because I'm taking all the energy of all the individual children and then all of them together to create this with them. It's just it's so extraordinary. And you're doing workshops now, I believe, to work with kids to help them find their voice. 
Yes, yes, I am. And um, I do have one coming up, as you know. That's why I'm so, so, so excited and grateful to be here talking about it with you and everybody today. I have one coming up a week from today. Uh, It's in Los Angeles, and it is going to be a two-hour workshop, and it's going to be held at a a residential home in the backyard. And it's just what I was sharing with you. It's taking them through an empowerment conversation, through questions that I give them, and then creating this song together. And what it does is it encourages full self-expression, and it builds confidence. And, And to me, I mean, then we create this amazing song, and to me they have this tool that they get to listen to, that they're also singing along with. And, you know, that's what brings us back to the whole idea of affirmations, right? Because we're building muscle memory when we're affirming things, and then it becomes the reality. So I'm empowering these children through the affirmations, affirming who they are, and then putting it to music and creating a song together, which is so much fun, but it is extraordinarily powerful. That's great. And so for people that, you know, want to be able to send their children there, whether they're around the world and they're going to fly their kids with or whether they're here and they want to be able to connect with you. Or even if they have a child, I mean, I know you travel all over the world to work with kids and to work with people and for weddings and to sing and at huge concerts and, you know, concerts, I suppose. And so how does somebody find you and your work? Okay, well, you can find me either my website is giftofsongs.com that's my website, giftofsongs.com. Uh, they can email me at info at giftofsongs.com. And I would be more than happy for anyone to contact me also by telephone number. I will give that as well. Uh, it's 310-927-3000. And this event is taking place next Saturday, which will be April 11th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And the area is the Brentwood, L.A. area. So for anyone that wants to travel and have this experience for their children, you will be absolutely amazed at the empowerment that will take place in these two hours and that they'll carry with them for a lifetime. That's fabulous. And, you know, if you, those of you that are listening that are in Dallas or that are in Atlanta or that are in Paris and you want to fly carry in to do one in your neighborhood, you can also do that as well because I know that you work everywhere, which is just such a gift. You are the gift of songs, which is so oh. beautiful. And then I have a question for you about the wedding songs. Okay. So you've got all these you know, people say, okay, this would be a fabulous gift. We're going to gift the bride and the groom their very own love song, how they fell in love, how they met, whatever their vibration is, and their joy. And I think, it, which is, I cannot imagine a better gift to give somebody for their wedding. Mm-hmm. And then how far in advance do they need to let you know to for you to be able to create a wedding song? How does that work? Well, you know, I am known as the the overnight or the instant girl, as you know, because I come up with things. So, I come up with things so fast, and I even do events where we'll create songs right there at the event, like this one with the children. You know, the song is going to be created right there in the moment. But when it comes to something that, of course, is going to involve more production, um, possibly live musicians in the studio, whatever kind of programming and all the mixing and everything that has to go into it, you do need to give me. I would say the best time frame is, you know, at least a few months, you know, because you really want to deliver a product that's just absolutely out of this world. And that's the only way that I want to do things for my clients, you know. So I would say a few months when it comes to weddings. But I have had to deliver uh, very quickly uh, for last-minute gifts, song ideas, and have done that successfully many, many times. So, like, for example, you know someone's birthday is coming up next week and you're thinking, how could she do that? No, I can. I can do that. I totally can do that Um, and would love to do that because that's what I get so much joy out of is helping you to create that gift to give to that person you love. And when they hear that song, I mean, there are no words to describe what that experience is like. Right, Nicole? Absolutely. It's just, I mean, it's beyond the beyond. It's the most perfect, precious, personal, intimate, extraordinary, unique, and original gift you possibly could give somebody that you love and care about. 
So I think it's just fabulous beyond all measures and all measures. And then I'd also love to talk about the personal songs because we touched on that just a bit. But for those that don't understand what a personal yes. song is, because I know I grew up with Bobby Sherman and he would sing Julie, 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 do you love me? And I was all upset uh-huh. because my name was Nicole and not Julie. And then you hear Michelle my bell. And I was like, how come I'm not Michelle or whatever that is? And Phil to Dawn and all these women got their own songs. But there wasn't a Nicole song for me. <laughs> <laughs> How does somebody get their own song? Well, you know, there's so many different there's so many different ways uh, that people want to have a song created for them. So I do it for a variety of reasons. So again, you're celebrating someone and you want to do it in honor of them. You're going to provide me with all the information about them. You know, everything that is special and unique about them and even the type of music that they would be listening to, you know, that's going to really truly resonate in their heart because that's why I call it heart song. I mean, it goes to the core of what's going to affect the person at the deepest level. And so if it's for a gift and it's for celebrating their birthday or honoring them in some way, then that's how it's going to work. Now, there's a whole other area that I work with, and that's personal development heart song. And as a heart song coach, I work in a variety of ways. I work with individuals who are struggling with some thing in their life. And it could just be their own voice. You know, it could be that they don't feel comfortable when they speak in front of crowds and that's what they need to do for a living. Or they're recording in the studio and that's a very different experience as well. Anywhere in their lives where they have to deliver their voice in a powerful way, I can work with them. I can give them tools, uh, both physical movement. Uh, We do special kinds of vocal techniques and exercises to do who they are so it becomes very authentic when they express themselves and very powerful. And in many cases, we can create a song. So what it does is it provides the, the education that they now have and the new transformation that has taken place for them. And then they have a reminder And what I love about that, and I love that you said beyond, because I say everything is beyond. (laughs) And what I do is I provide them with this song, which is beyond working with me. So even after they're done working with me, they have this song that reminds them of what they have transformed in their lives. And it's their mantra that they can listen to. So that's also something that I have done with my clients. And it can be anything from someone trying to find their soulmate or just someone, like I said, who just wants to empower their voice because they have to use it in their daily lives. It's so incredible. It really is just that this is what you do. And when when you talk about channeled, inspirational music, and I've always wanted to ask you this, and I know we've never had this conversation. Do you hear the words first? Do you hear the melody? Do you see light or vibration? Or do you use crystals or (laughs) sounds or something? I mean, how does one channel and what does that look like for you the experience of channeling music in a song so I'll tell you how it began Um, I have this incredible connection to the beach and to the South Bay where I've lived in the past and I'm going to be moving back to soon again and there's something about the ocean and being in that environment that really fed into the, the opening for me to start allowing channeling to happen and it's really funny because the first time it came through, it's in the shower. <laughs> like it really, really just came through in the shower. And I'm like, I have nowhere where I can record this or write it down. And I literally had to like run out of the shower, you know, find a pen and write down what was coming through. And the very first time it happened, it happened melodically. Like I heard the music in my head and I heard the lyrics. And it was like, wow, because it was the first time. And then what I found is when I was physically moving, this was in the beginning um, of channeling, when I was physically moving, doing exercise, so I was running or I was rollerblading or I was walking, that's when it started to come through. And there's something about the movement or the water. And a lot of times the movement was by the water. That's why I feel there's a real connection with the water. And so these songs would just start coming through me. And they do come 
with music and lyrics at the same time. So I've learned different ways to be able to record. You know, um, I love the fact that nowadays my iPhone is it's everything. I mean, I can record everything. I can record the audio, and then I can go to the notes section, and I can write the words. I mean, it's amazing how I can actually make sure that I get everything that's coming through now, where before I couldn't do that. <laughs> So special. I mean, I've always wanted to ask that. I've always wondered how it works because I've watched you create songs. People will give you words, you know, flower or whatever, baby lamb and you know, sunshine. And the next thing you know, you're singing a song that could be, you know, on the charts. And it's so, I've always wondered how that works in your mind and your consciousness and your brain that First, the speed in which you do it, and then the fact that it just a song just is created and comes through you. And you know, I, I thought of another thing to share, and people will find this interesting is that, you know, as a songwriter, you sometimes you put this pressure on yourself to write a song. I've never been able to just sit down and write a song because there's something that happens that the brain goes into a mode of have to. And what I've learned is when I just allow, I just open up, I just relax, it just comes. You know, it's totally not happening. It's totally not really happening in my mind, but it's just coming through me. And I'm I'm catching it, you know. And as I catch it and I receive it, I have so much gratitude for that. I mean, I've had the honor of receiving messages from people who have transitioned the planet. And I don't think there's a greater honor, a greater gift that I could have than to hear their vibration, to hear who they are through sound, music, and lyrics, and then to sing that to somebody who knew them and for them to say, oh, my God, I feel them. I mean, that, that I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to describe to you except for it's happened a few times, and it really, it just, it wows me beyond, beyond me, beyond the beyond, like you said before. <laughs> Okay, well, I love that because that actually leads me into my next question. So thank you so much for that opening. <laughs> because I wanted to ask you about, like, that you sing in agape, or that you sing in these ministries, and that you sing in these spiritual centers that are non-denominational spiritual centers. So you were singing for every religion, for every heart, for every spirit, for every consciousness, for every soul, you somehow plug in or are connected to them. And so how were you led to do that? And what is that like for you to open people on all these different levels of consciousness and understanding with spirit and God and light? Well, it all starts with meditation. You know, it all starts with really being in a place to connect, be open and listen, and then be guided on what it is that would be most powerful to share. And then those messages come through as words and melody, and I put it together, and then I feel that I'm guided to the people that I'm supposed to share it with. And it is for everybody. You know, it's universal. Um, Because I think that's so important about music is to make music universal because everybody can connect to what you're singing about, you know. And I feel it's so important to to share, and it's like the way you started the call and what this this radio show is all about. It's about encouraging people to follow their hearts, to listen to that voice that they hear that sometimes they don't listen to and really be true to who they are in this life. You know, while we're here, while we're in this physical body, just to be able to give everything we have and share everything we have. I mean, I am so passionate about helping people to share who they are in the world and if we can do that through a song well that's just beyond amazing but however it is um, I'm working on another piece of material right now that was so inspired by Wayne Dyer you know who was hearing his words during the darkest times that I was going through and my mother read me don't die with the music still in you and at that point Nicole honestly that I was partially dead So to hear those words, and they touched a place in me that could still feel, and it just said to me, you know, this is what's going to carry you. And now the works that I'm creating for people is don't die with the song still in you because everybody has a song to sing. Everybody has a message in their hearts, and they need to let it out. And That's one of my titles of one of my songs, Let It Out. So I think all of my songs are geared towards opening people's hearts raising their consciousness, raising their vibration, and waking them up to who they are so that they can shine 
brighter, you know, and be everything that they came here to be. Oh, I love that. And one of my favorite titles of one of your songs is Welcome to Your Life, which I believe <laughs> you recorded as international dance music. But I just love Welcome to Your Life. <laughs> I love that too. And can I tell you an amazing story of how that channel? Because that's really a sure. story. I haven't told that in a long time. I had met this amazing producer. I mean, he's just so out of this world. Noah Lazarus is his name, and a lot of people know him because he's done some amazing, amazing work in film and a lot of very original music around the world. And we had this connection, and I felt like we need to do this song together. And I just called his answering machine one day and I just started singing what was coming through, what I was channeling about Welcome to Your Life. And I was singing and I was humming and I had words and in his response to me <laughs> his response to me, honest to God, was harmonica. He just called and left a message playing harmonica. And I was like, Oh my God, I mean this isn't even this isn't even of this world, right? Because my musical self and his musical self are having a conversation. <laughs> and so he was just so inspired to do this incredible, I don't know what you call it, piece of music together. Because the original piece of music that we recorded, and it was a combination of electronic and live on the road, you know, um, playing the road piano and then the harmonica. And it was very, um, it was very improvisational, you know, and it was about 14 minutes long, the original version. And what's so amazing is it's like a piece of music that can transcend any space that you're in. So you could listen to the music while you're cleaning, while you're driving, you know, while you're doing work. It just has such a vibration to it. And then I had the opportunity to record another version of it where another producer friend of mine, Calix Sky, said, you know, let's make this more into a song. You know, let's pull out the, the real part that we call, you know, the hooks, the things that people hook onto and they remember and they can't stop singing. And then let's make a video, you know, with this song so that we can really express the message about Welcome to Your Life and about the joy and love and peace that's inside of you. So I had all these opportunities with this song and it's really been amazing because I even had another friend use that song as the opening to, you know, to their talk show because it's a morning show. It's so much fun for me just to listen to you. And I, <laughs> you call the guy's answering machine and just start singing away. I would love that. If you ever want to call my answering machine and just sing away, Carrie, please feel free to do that. I don't own a harmonica, but I'll come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm happy to. I am so happy to do that. It, it, it's my greatest gift to sing people, you know, messages. Uh, I think that's what inspired the idea. I think I shared with you uh, another time that it inspired the idea when I said, oh, you know, I just sing people's uh, messages when it's their birthdays. I just create a song, and it's not happy birthday. You know, you know. It's all this just unique things about that person that I want to sing to them and have them feel as bright as they can on what we call their with me. I lost your voice just for a second. Well, when she comes back, we will certainly, as she's talking about this beautiful, 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 beautiful essence of her soul. Isn't that so much fun that she would call somebody's machine, sing her little heart out, somebody that she was inspired to work with, how brave and courageous, by the way, how many of you wanted to call Steven Spielberg or something like that, and or the president, just to call up and to sing and to leave a little message and have them call back with their own vibration, I just think is so much fun. So it's just... Uh, I was saying, Carrie, as you're back, that how brave and courageous of you to call someone's machine. This thing that we should all do that with, like, Steven Spielberg or Obama or somebody that we want to call. Be like, okay, here it goes. Ready? <laughs> no, it's a great idea. I, you, know, Someone was saying to me the other day that I should create a song for, like, a DJ, you know, for, like, a major radio station, uh, just as a gift, and so that they would be so inspired and so enthusiastic about how that affects them that they'd want to do something about putting that song on the radio for everybody to hear. And I thought that was actually an amazing idea. 
It's a great idea. It's a phenomenal <laughs> idea, and your music is amazing. And now I want to take Thank you on you. the other side of the world and the other side of the mm-hmm. spectrum of the coin with your music. So we were mm-hmm. talking about the kids and the joy of the kids and finding their own voice and vibration and birthday songs and wedding songs and happy songs and corporate songs and songs of you and light and love and peace and, and how to be able to get that vibration in to be played that you can feel it as you're talking about that affirmation and that knowingness and so it is and all of that. But I also know that when we talk about your braveness and your courage and your music that you've worked with the troops and I think you were even in Guantanamo Bay in Cuba and so what is that like? Oh my God. I mean that was an experience that I just, I was so moved by how I was received as an artist. And when I first got the invitation to go to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, it was as a background singer, and I was just as excited to go and perform for these troops and get to do what I love and do it for, you know, men and women that are so courageous themselves. And then they heard my original music, and they said, wow, okay, your original music is so inspiring and so positive. We'd like you to sing a couple of your own original songs, which was it's the most amazing opportunity. I mean, it, to this day, it's one of the most incredible things I've already experienced in my life. And so I got to sing two of my original songs and then back up on a bunch of, you know, rock songs that the troops love singing. But my experience there was, was so surreal. You know, here you have, like, the prison there, you know, and that, you you know, you're not able to even see it, but it's there. And then you have everybody walking around who's just so truly passionate about what they're they're doing and they have no no regrets about what they're doing you know this is their commitment and for me to be able to bring this music to them and for them to appreciate it so much i mean literally i got to perform i think it was uh, four concerts in five days and we got to do repeat concerts with some of the same people in the audience they were singing the lyrics to my song and that was I, I don't even have words to describe what that was like. That it inspired them, it moved them. You know, one man even said to me, I'm going through such a hard time right now, and I heard that song, and it just made me feel so much better. I don't think there's anything better than that, Nicole, is that what I do has such an effect on other people, that the words and the vibration and the music all together is moving people. And that's what I want my music to be able to do, is move people, inspire people, help them transcend wherever they may feel stuck so that they can be more free in their lives and more self-expressed. And I believe that the music has the power to do it. I actually sign all my emails, healing the world one song at a time. Boy, that just makes you smile. (laughs) (laughs) So grinning ear to ear, you just say, yes. (laughs) You just want to stand up and say, yes. And I imagine to go into a war zone like that, that, you know, it must hurt your heart. And then to be able to lift your heart in the process of that and open your heart instead of close and be afraid and not want to see it, to step into it and to offer that vibration of peace and harmony and love. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only way, you know. It's the only way I touch everything in a place of being open and not judging and you know, not looking at things for what they look like, but seeing beyond that. That's why I think that's so great. You started off the whole call about beyond because everything's beyond, you know, it is beyond what we can see. And so I just felt that there was such a beautiful field of love uh, on the island with all these troops. And that even though that was going on and I was aware of it, I didn't let myself be pulled into that. I just prayed and kept holding a high vibration for what was possible for who was involved. Mm. Have you ever had a moment when you were little or you were small that you saw an artist sing or perform or have heard something on the radio that in that moment you said, I want to do that? Yeah, actually when I was a little girl and I had the absolute amazing honor and privilege and pleasure of seeing Whitney Houston Um, My mother took me to the concert, and that was just the most incredible example of a woman who gave everything she had in every moment. And I got to experience that, and I felt that. You know, I felt that in my entire being, that I wanted to 
perform like that, to give everything I had, because that's that's what it's about. And she just, she was such the, the symbol of such talent, but really of extraordinary generosity with what she had to give to the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's funny, too, because she sang this song, um, I Believe the Children Are Our Future. And as much as I knew that song and I loved that song, I met somebody recently who sent me a clip to the video of Celine Dion and Whitney Houston. She made that video. Did you see that beautiful video that Celine Dion made where she's singing along with Whitney Houston? No, no. Oh, Oh, my God. And he said to me, I thought of you, and I'm watching the video, and I'm listening to the words, and never had I felt the song the way I did when I listened to it this time, and never did I realize volumes of what I'm doing with the children. It, it just it just never landed the way it did, and I cried through, like, watching the whole video. You have to watch it. I mean, it is extraordinary. But to feel like I can play a role in shifting the lives of children at a young age so that they are more prepared for life and they are more, the, the, so they know more of who, the, who they are, who they truly are, and they can truly express themselves. I mean, nothing gives me more joy. I mean, I work with children, you know, on a one-on-one basis as well that love to act and sing, and those are their outlets of self-expression. And when I watch these children just bloom in front of my eyes, and open up, and I get them to really connect with their center and their power, and I just watch them become so powerful right in front of me. I'm just really, truly amazed that I can hold that space and that I can lead them into that. It, it just brings me so much joy. It, it really, truly does. That's great. And I know in reading on your website, you've also worked with a lot of fundraisers for kids as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I love to be part of fundraising any way that I can. I've been very involved with the aut- autism movement. Um, I raise money for Cure Autism Now. Um, I'm now working with some people who are part of Rock the Spectrum uh, because I want to expand my work and I want to work with more children that are both on the spectrum and off the spectrum because I have learned that with autistic children, uh, when they're doing movement, uh, movement and dance, what happens is their brains actually shift into a gear where they're more connected. And it's just the most extraordinary thing. It's the most extraordinary thing to watch. And so singing, as you know, too, is something that's just so important for children with different developmental disabilities, including autism, to be able to express themselves through singing. And so I'm I'm working on making those connections right now so that I can offer more of what I do um, to all children, you know, to all children that, that, that will benefit by it. By this, by the heart songs. That's so perfect. It really is. I just love who you are and the kaleidoscope of who you are and how you spread your wings and your feathers and your voice around the planet. And I also know as you talk about Whitney Houston and you talk about the gift of songs and, and all of the creation and the work that you do, but you also collaborate beautifully. I mean, I know so <laughs> many other artists that you're working with and even with the kids, I believe, that you're collaborating with someone as well. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love to collaborate with the kids, even with the writing. I mean, I actually have this one student. She's about nine years old, and we've been writing a song together. And it's just been so wonderful to watch her step into knowing that she can write her own song and that doing it together is such a magical feeling of, you know, this young, innocent energy mixing with my wisdom and, you know, and the many lifetimes. <laughs> But, you know, what's funny about that, too, is many of these children are are very sensitive um, and they are indigo children. And so this is even more, um, it fits even more in with who they are naturally. So they feel more understood when they get to express themselves and create songs with me. And I, I love that. You know, that's another way to really make sure that, that the indigo children are, are being guided and are given these beautiful tools to express themselves. Mm. And then do you work with bands and do you work with other singing partners as well? I sure do. I have a partner on the East Coast performing with uh, in a couple of weeks when I'm back there visiting my family in Massachusetts, Peter Tintindo. He's amazing. We've written songs together. We've written wedding songs together. We've written pop songs together. 
uh, one of the ones that we've written will be on my album. And I also work with Fizz, uh, who you met and you know, and he's amazing. And he's going to be doing this workshop with me uh, next Saturday. It's so much fun. What a fun, fun, <laughs> fun life. You get to travel the world and just sing your songs and share your songs and the gift of music and elevate people's souls and elevate people's consciousness and change their lives and open them to their pathways and their doorways and their gateways and mm-hmm. give children the gift of life and the vibration of who they are and a better world and help anti-bullying and fundraise for all of these great causes. <laughs> you are a pretty special woman, Carrie. You really Thank are. Thank you, Nicole. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, cool. It's so cool. And I know at the top of the show, and I just wanted to touch on this because it's a conversation that we've never had, but since this is unlimited life and there are all different ways to live an unlimited life, you were talking about how you were raised by your grandparents, mm-hmm. and which is kind of prevalent in today's society. And so can you share a little bit about what that was like to have, like, the next generation of love? and support? Uh, Absolutely. And I feel like the luckiest, still say girl, even though I'm a woman, but the luckiest girl in the world growing up. And and it's a beautiful thing to touch on also because my father did actually leave when I was, um, when I was an infant. And I have come to be so grateful for that because if he didn't make the choice to leave, which I believe at that time, he thought that was the best choice for him. I wouldn't have had the gift of being raised by my grandparents. And I wouldn't trade anything in the world for that because my grandparent and my grandmother is still alive, as we talked about, 94 years young. She's incredible. Um, you know, they just held such a beautiful space for me growing up. Um, I always felt so safe and so secure and so heard. And, you know, it was just, it, it, it was just amazing having them be my parents. Um, they really played such a huge role in shaping me to be who I am. And my grandfather really was the father figure that I had for the first 20 years of my life. And I have dedicated my book, How One Word Will Change Your World, to my Papa Harold uh, for being always my biggest fan when he was here on this planet and even after transitioning, being my biggest, I call him my biggest heavenly cheerleader. And I also, my best friend growing up, Joy, who was just a magical being and was my first friend ever. And I also dedicated to her so that I can continue to carry on the joy in life through everything that I do. And I I think of them and feel them with me all the time. And it makes the work I do so much richer to be carrying on their legacy, which reminded me of something else I wanted to share. Uh, Many people, and I think you know, Nicole, there was a young boy um, who he transitioned a few years back, but he made such an impact on the world while he was here. Maddie Stepanek, he was on CNN and Oprah, and even though he knew that he wasn't going to live long, he gave so much. He was an old soul. He gave so much to the world through these poems that he wrote and the way that he expressed them. And I didn't know till just a few years ago when I became aware of the fact that he called them heart songs. <laughs> and at that moment, I just started to cry because heart songs actually downloaded I like to use that expression it came through me it downloaded um, and I didn't know exactly what it meant but I knew that it meant I'm supposed to write my own heart song but that has led me on this journey of realizing I look at heart song as a technology it, and what I love to see is it turn into song and it does in, in many of the cases that, that I'm involved with but I just recently met somebody and he's such an angel and he just made the connection uh, through Facebook with me and Maddie's mom, Jenny Stepanek. And I am so excited. I mean, I could see I could almost cry just thinking about it because I feel like part of my work is to carry on Maddie's legacy and to be able to join forces with his mom. I mean, anything is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> That's so great. And I have a question <laughs> that I wanted to ask because is singing natural? I mean, if people learn how to speak. And babies learn how to walk. But I don't remember people teaching you really how to sing. And there are people in, you know, that live in the rainforest that <laughs> don't have resources to CDs or albums or bands or Houston or anybody, and they naturally sing. And so does it just, does everybody 
music just happens in your heart and you start to sing, or do you know? Well, you know, what I believe is that, again, everyone has a song in their heart. Everyone has a song to sing. And not not everybody is born with a strong ability to carry a tune, you know, or to have the ability to really have a lot of extra kind of um, gifts to be able to take their voice to that next level as a singer. But I don't think it limits anybody from being able to sing. You know, I was in a class during college which taught people how to sing at all levels, including tone deaf. And that was amazing. I mean, that that's not my gift, but this man's gift was to teach people to sing that were even tone deaf. And so, you know, there is the possibility, even if someone doesn't hear music the way it's played, could sing and they could be more in tune. Um, I think everyone has that inside of them. And some people, when they're trained, they can get to the next level with their voice. And I've seen it happen in so many different examples of people's voices. Which So I always say, again, anything is possible, <laughs> you know. Um, but I definitely believe with me, what I do is I work with people who already sing and I help empower the voice that they have so that they're fully connected and that they are fully embodied and so that when they're expressing themselves, it's all coming through their voice. And that's what touches everybody so deeply. And it's the, where I come from, you know, at the core is feeling everything that I sing. And that's what that makes the magic. Mm, great answer. So we only have a couple minutes left, and so I always love to ask people on this show. The show is called Unlimited Life. And so what does leading an unlimited life mean to you? It means knowing that anything is possible, and it means truly listening to your heart and following your heart and doing everything that is in your heart that's yours to do. You know, it's about getting clear on what your individual gift is and how you can deliver it. And as long as you are finding a way to deliver your gift, even if you're doing something else and it's not your passion, but you have to find a way to deliver your gift so you're living an unlimited life because you never want to limit yourself from expressing yourself in the way that you came here to express yourself. And by doing that, it always tends to create more energy around that thing that you love so much, which ultimately brings more opportunity to do what you love. So I find that when you just commit to doing the thing you love most, it opens up the doorways and the gateways for for infinite opportunities to do more of what you love. And I also feel that when you help others to do what they love, it's just this beautiful, energetic reciprocation that you seem to get more opportunities to do what you love. You know, I think Zig Ziglar said, right, you help more people get what they want and that's how you get what you want. But it just comes from a place of my heart and from being of service and to giving everything I have. And somehow, magically, like today, I'm on your show, you know, the universe just says, you know, here you go. And I wrote a song, too, called Here You Go. So that's how you live an unlimited life. (laughs) Wow, what a luscious answer. I just love that. It's so rich and so palatable, and it just feels so right. It was interesting. I was at a workshop last week, a Master Souls conference, and somebody sat there and they said, I feel like the angels are pouring wine into my heart. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's sort of your music does that. I feel like the angels are pouring music into my heart. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> So beautiful. So, Carrie, tell us once more how to reach you for your beautiful gift of songs, your children's workshops, and all of the stupendous music you're bringing to the planet. Absolutely. You can reach me on my website or find me on my website at giftofsongswithanest.com. The email address is info at giftofsongswithanest.com. You can call me or text me at 310-927-3000. Also, my Facebook is Carrie LeBlanc, so I'll spell LeBlanc as L-E-B, as in the word blessings, L-A-N-G, as in the word gratitude. And next Saturday, April 11th, 1 to 3 p.m., in the Brentwood, Los Angeles area, we will be having the most amazing workshop. So if you can get your children there, please do. 
it's going to be a magical afternoon with Fizz and myself. Oh, it just sounds wonderful. And for those of you that have been writing feverishly through this, gift of songs and how you get a wedding song and how you get a personal song and how you get your kids to be harmonized and enlightened <laughs> and all of that, you can put the pen down, pick up your phone, and just send a text message to 55678. It's easy, 55678. And that message is simply Nicole, and you can download a copy of today's show right into your phone or any mobile device. And so we are happy to have you have a copy of the show and listen to Carrie, which is just extraordinary. So, Carrie, thank you for being with us today. I mean, just oh. so beautiful to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Nicole. I My heart is filled to overflowing with gratitude with the Passover and equinox moon and this day has been so amazing and it's just the ice cream on the the cake or I'm sorry the frosting on the cake <laughs> <laughs> well you are the cherry on this Sunday and we love having you with us we wish you a sacred a beautiful and a blessed holiday season for you and your family and all those that you love so. thank you so much and you too and we look forward to having you back so thank you for being with us today wow the, what a beautiful amazing spectacular, extraordinary guest. Can you imagine doing that? Just being able to sing what's in your heart and to be able to sing what's in other people's hearts or to be able to share someone's love through the gift of song or empower your child out of bullying or give them the tools and a way to empower themselves through the gift of music and song and finding that harmony in their spirit and soul and self to be able to call somebody and sing on their machine and have them respond musically and to be able to communicate on an entirely different level or to be able to channel words and lyrics and vibrations from another planet, another world, and share them here to be able to gift the people on this planet. All of this joy, all of this happiness, all of this peace, even in the deepest, darkest war zones, to be able to be and to bring the light. She's really so amazing and so, so blessed to have her with us today. And I had the rare, beautiful opportunity this week to be in attendance of the Spotlight Awards where the children were performing at the Disney Hall. And these kids were picked out of thousands of kids in jazz and classical dance and modern dance and pop singing, classical music and acting and the talent of these children was so extraordinary. And so as Carrie was saying, these indigo children that have the light and giving them the tools through the arts to be able to portray and share who they are, their spirit, their souls, their thoughts, their beingness, and to have someone like Carrie guide them is such a tremendous gift on this planet. And so for all of you that have kids, find her. For all of you that have a song in your heart, which is everyone, she says, find her and wishing you the most incredible holiday weekend. So for myself, Nicole Brandon, and for Carrie LeBlanc, we are wishing you a very unlimited life, a happy holiday season, and may all your wishes and dreams come true, and may you live that unbridled life that you always knew you were meant to live, because everything can be yours when you live the unlimited life of your dreams.